So something that we can think about when we've been designing out our code so far is that we've actually been sort of throwing things out sporadically into memory. So when I say something like uh, int x equals 5, you know, maybe that gets allocated right here. And then right below that I say something like int y equals 10. Well, it doesn't appear right next to it. It doesn't go right here. Uh, that's because you know, something else might be going on in my computer at the same time. Uh, so I actually run into the big issue of just wherever I can uh, throw it into my memory. Remember, RAM stands for Random Access Memory. It, it, it just throws it wherever it can. Uh, but we actually kind of uh, have a, a bit of an issue. What happens if I wanted to make uh, a few more of these. What happens if I wanted to, say, make 100 of them? Uh, you're thinking to yourself, that's cruel. Why would uh, an instructor do that? Well, because we're instructors. But you'd probably start going through the process like this. You'd start going through the song and dance of going through each one of these over and over and over again until you got to uh, 100 and then you I come back and I say ah, no do 200 uh, because you did it the wrong way and I'm doing this to spite you at which point you hate me uh, but what we're looking at is like I said you're doing it the wrong way well if I want to make all of these variables what I probably want to do is I want to have them stored in a specific way stored sequentially if you will the reason why is if we think about it this right here this is an integer. Now why does that matter? Well, an integer has 32 bits stored. Oh, sorry, bytes. Bytes. Used to uh, represent this number. So what I can do is now I can think about this in the idea that Let's think about this as real estate. Uh, let's think, uh, for example, you know, an integer. An integer is like building a house. I'm just gonna kind of draw a little house here. It's like a little house that's just being drawn, hangs out, and whatnot. Well, that's being allocated. Uh, that's an integer. Now, say for example, I make a double. Now, a double. That's a really big house. That's kind of like, uh, you know, um, let's say, just say it's a mansion. It's the mansion that's right next door, or I guess in our case, a skyscraper. Uh, so what I need to do is, if we know what my data is, if we know sort of my collection of data, if I know that each one of these are going to be integers, that tells me that I can explicitly know how kind of far it is going to be. Uh, because what this allows for me to do is I can now kind of follow some mathematical equations. Uh, say I have a list of numbers, again. Say I have a list of numbers. And in those numbers, I've got uh, 5, 10, 25, and 100. Each one of these are an integer, which means each one is 32 bytes. Well, I would like it so that they all appear sort of in the same uh, spot sequentially because, again, each one is 32 bytes. So I know how big this is being allocated. I know how big this is getting allocated. I know how big this is being allocated and I know how big this is being allocated. So what this allows for me to do is now I can think about it in the sense of where they're located in sort of this connection. And again, the computer starts counting at zero, so we can think that this five, that is in the zero spot, this 10, that is in the one spot, this 25 is in the two spot, and this 100 is in the three spot. Again, what we're looking at is this idea that each one of these integers are 32 bits. So what this allows for me to do is I can come in here and I can say that, well, oh, that 5, that 5 starts at my memory address. 
And then I can look at, say for example, my 10. This is gonna be terrible to draw, but my 10, that's my memory address plus 32, plus 32, sorry, plus 32 bytes. Because, again, I had to store five, now I'm storing 10. So you can already start to imagine, uh, what I can do is here, this is memory address, plus, and instead of 32 or 64, I'm going to say plus 32 times 2. Because in reality, what we've been doing is that number that we have here, that's actually indicating how far away from the beginning of the memory address I want to be looking. So when I do something like here, I'm really saying plus 32 times 1, and I'm really saying 32 times 0 here. And so you can imagine this one would be uh, 32 times 32 times 3. So what this allows for me to do is now that I have sort of this number uh, that I can work with, this allows for me to now store my numbers in sequential order. And that becomes the basis for an array. So let's say, for example, I had my days of the week, Sunday, oh, sorry about that, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Now, again, let's follow that same kind of mentality. We're dealing with strings now. Strings are a little bigger than 32 bits, but I can start counting the same way. I can think of Sunday as my zero, Monday as my one, Tuesday as my two, Wednesday as my three, Thursday is my four, Friday is five, Saturday as six. Now, these numbers right here, these guys right here, these are actually something known as my index. And it's, again, how I sort of reference any particular, another word that we'll kind of introduce here, these guys are known as my elements. So I use this index to identify which element in my array I'm talking about. So if I'm talking about, say for example, Wednesday, Wednesday is cu currently being stored in the three index of my array.